Hi there, my name is AJ Smith. I'm currently a primary school teacher in London, but until a couple of years ago, I was a student and I studied for my undergraduate degree in liberal arts here in England. Uh, and then I went to Oxford and I studied for a postgraduate qualification to get my teaching status, which I really enjoyed. Um, however, as a paper and pen kind of guy, this was quite a few years ago, the iPad was around, various different things were around. Uh, I don't think the Apple Pencil had come out yet, which is a bit of a game changer as far as digital note taking is concerned. But I didn't use any technology really to help me with my degree at all. I mean, I used word processor and that really is about it. So this is, and I went and dug these out. Oh, this is what my university days look like. Uh, A5 notes. Uh, and then handouts. We've always got a handout every single lecture with all of our reading on it. And this isn't even a couple of weeks of handouts. This is two modules here. Uh, these are the notes that I would keep in these A5 folders like this uh, with nicely handwritten notes. And then for each essay that I was doing, I would choose the uh, readings that I wanted and I would put them into one of these folders. So I have lots of loose readings in these folders. And then uh, for each uh, lecture series, for each course, I would have one of these folders and these folders will contain all the readings and the syllabus and the materials like that. And so I now have shelf upon shelf of folders. I have boxes full of loose bits of paper and readings. I do have some notes on word processors from when I was writing my dissertation. Um, but like I say, mostly everything is just paper, paper, paper. Nowadays, I'm really into digital note taking. I'm into keeping myself organized using different apps like Notion and Instapaper. And this is not how I would run my life if I was doing a degree today. So I'm gonna make a little video today to show you some of the different techniques that I would use. And one of the first things I would do is replace all of this with this. And I think the iPad is where you've got to start if you're interested in doing digital note taking. This is the iPad Air 2020, which I absolutely love that I've had for a couple of months now, um, using the Apple Pencil 2. You could use something like a Samsung Galaxy Tab, uh, absolutely. You could use an older iPad with the Apple Pencil 1, nothing wrong with that. But if you're interested in taking digital note taking seriously and you want to do handwritten notes, this is the way to go. If you're not interested in doing handwritten notes, you can basically do everything in Notion. But today I'm going to show you how I would continue to do handwritten notes in lectures uh, using the iPad. OK, so when it comes to digital note taking, there are three options that you have, really. You could continue to make notes using a paper and pen on a notebook in your lecture, and then you could scan in these pages into your iPad. The second option that you have is that you could use something like Notion and you could use your laptop keyboard. You could use a magic keyboard and you could just input your notes straight up digitally into there. And that's if you're not particularly concerned about having handwritten notes. And the third option uh, is to make the notes handwritten directly into your iPad. So what I've done for this is I've taken a page of notes from a lecture that I was in in university in my last year and I've imagined what it would look like if I was making these notes today. And one of the big differences is I'm using the Cornell note taking method, something that I do all the time now with my professional reading that's really helped me to keep track of what I'm reading. Um, and it looks very similar. I've got the highlighting in the same place, but I've just got this list of headings down the left hand side and space for a summary at the bottom. When I'm using good notes, I like to use A5 paper, A because I'm used to using A5 paper, and B because it just sits nicely on the screen of the iPad. I think you can read it all on one page without having to zoom in, and you can write as well without having to zoom in a great deal. The next thing that I would do is I would get my handout and I would scan this in. Now you can buy obviously scanners and you can buy fancy materials for doing this. However, the iPad itself is a fantastic scanner. Your phone is a fantastic scanner as well if you don't have an iPad that you want to use. And you can import these directly using GoodNotes or you can use something like Adobe Scan to create a PDF that will recognize the text that's in the document and make it searchable. It's a little bit time consuming, especially if you have a lot of handouts or textbook pages, but it's something that's worth doing, especially if you are going to make that text searchable. And speaking of searchable text, for me, one of the absolute genius features of GoodNotes is the ability to search your own handwritten notes. Now, these are notes and I might be wanting to write an essay, but I'm going to have to look through here. And luckily, I've highlighted a lot of 
features on here, but it's going to take me a long time to go through and find things that are relevant to what I'm doing. But if I was using my notes on an iPad and I was writing an essay, for example, about Aporia, I would go up here, I could type into the search results here, Aporia, and it brings up in my notes, every single place in which I've mentioned Aporia. And you can see my handwriting, it's not the best, but it's also not the worst, but it has recognized those words in there. And I just think that's so powerful. Then we can go over to the, the handout itself, to the text itself. And you can see that I've made some notes on here using uh, pen and paper, uh, which is great. But I can also now, if I wanted to, if I didn't want to carry all this paper around with me all day, I could just go in here, zoom in. I have to use quite a small nib because the text is quite small, but I can make my own notes here. So if this was about acceptance, I can add that here. I can put an exclamation mark. I can highlight bits of the text. And, you know, if you're a pastel highlighter person, you can choose whatever color of highlighters that you like within the app, which is fantastic. And now I have the original annotated version with my additional annotations on there as well. Now, I don't know why, but for me, the text of this isn't searchable, which is mm, a bit rubbish. Uh, there's probably a way of getting around that, but the annotations are searchable. So, for example, I've just put in the word acceptance. I can now search for all of the annotations I've made of the word acceptance. And the next part of this is linking into the Notion setup that I have for university. And I'm going to show you how we do everything. But before we do that, you need to know how to export. So from here, you can export the entire document or you can export a single page. Or if you click on here and go to select, say I just wanted to export the Gillian Rose reading, I can just export that. Or if I just wanted to export my handwritten notes, I can do that as a PDF and I can share that. I can send that to other people or I can keep it in my own notes. For me, Good Notes is an absolutely fantastic digital note taking app and it's really changed the game from when I was at university. It now makes digital note taking a real possibility, something that is not only uh, on a par with taking notes using pen and paper, but which actually has extra functionality. Okay, so let's take a look at the Notion template that I set up. What I did was I thought about how I would use Notion if I was in my final year of university now. I thought more than just how would I use it to keep track of deadlines, but also how would I use it as kind of a knowledge base? How would I use it as somewhere to store and cross-reference uh, lecture notes, how would I use it as somewhere to plan essays? How would I use it as somewhere to keep track of everything that was going on in sort of my academic life? So here's the template. It is available in the links down below. Um, it is the first template I've made. So please, if there's any issues with it, do let me know so I can fix them. As you can see on the home page, it's pretty simple and straightforward. You've got three terms for the final year, and each of those terms has linked pages. Uh, and these are the lecture, oh, these are the courses. So LA3018, this is based on a real course that I did at university. And this is what the course page looks like. So at the top, you can see the title LA3018, it was called Freedom is to Learn. And I'm really liking this black and red theme that I'm using in Notion at the moment. I think it works really well. I've used the call out function here so turn into a call out to just summarize what's going on in each one of these courses. So I know at a glance, I can look through all the different courses from all three years and know what was happening. I've then got the lecture times and here you might want to include something like a linked to do list or a link to a calendar. Uh, the essay pages, I'll show you these in a minute. These are really crucial to how this whole system works and links. So you can link to the campus page, to the syllabus, things like that. Now, these are all using linked databases. So you will need to have some central place like this to store all of your lecture notes. And this is what mine looks like. So each lecture will have a separate row on this table. So we can open this one here that I've already pre-prepared and I'll show you how we fill this in. Okay, so what I need to do is I need to create a relation that will link this to a database of the courses that I'm on. And that way it keeps everything neat and tidy. So I've already got a course list here. Uh, I create that relation and then I can link, where's it gone? Oh, it's in the date column, that's helpful. So this one would be called course and then I can link this into a particular course. So for example, this is gonna be LA3018. So I'll link it into there. And this one is gonna be LA3012, so I'll link it into there. I now need to add a date because I accidentally used that. Okay, and I'm just going to fill out these columns so we can actually open this up into a page like this and we can see it's called Aporia between beginning and end 
the date, let's say this lecture was on the 1st of November. Essay. So we need to think about what essay this is going to be relevant to. It's going to be relevant to essay one of two. Uh, and I'll show you why I've used tags there in a little bit. I've got the notes and the readings that I've uploaded the PDFs from GoodNotes. For tags, well, this was an essay, this was a lecture that was very relevant to phenomenology. Uh, I can tell you it was about postmodernism and it was related to aporia. And the good thing about having those tags there, that they're standardized across all of your lecture notes is that you can then use a filter to search for all of your notes that are relevant to postmodernism or all of your notes that are relevant to aporia. Again, the prospects of this helping with dissertations and essays is huge because you're not looking at a disorganized pile of notes, you're looking at basically a database of all of your information. Thinkers, well, Gillian Rose, Hegel, and Rowan Williams are all featured here, and you can easily add people to this list. You just type out their name and you add them in there as a property. Uh, and then this was week one, and that just helps me keep track of when we were doing these things. And so this is now a page in itself in Notion, which means that you can add anything to this page that you normally would. And so what I would do is I would create a summary of the notes and notes in themselves are a form of summary but one of the best techniques for getting to know something really well is to go back through your notes and to summarize what they're about maybe in five bullet points or six bullet points again this is going to help you with essay and dissertation work later down the line or if you choose to do postgraduate research this is going to be really crucial so we can say aporia pathlessness etc etc and you might want to write five bullet points there so this is in our lecture notes now but it is also appearing in the lecture notes here although this one shouldn't ah it's also appearing in the lecture notes here but i wanted to show you how we would set this up to have a filter on it at the moment it's bringing through everything from the lecture notes uh database it's a linked database what we need to do is we need to filter these to make sure that they are just showing us the ones that are relevant to this module. So we would go into add a filter, then we would go into course, and then we would select the course that we want, which is 3018. And that shrinks it down just here. And you'll notice it's not showing us every single property. Uh, that's to keep things nice and neat. Uh, that's because I've used the properties function and I've sorted by which properties I wanted to show and which I don't. Next, I'm going to show you the essay pages, and the essay pages are uh, really crucial, and I'm going to show you how to make one of these linked databases that just pulls through certain relevant bits of information. So the essay page looks like this, and this is just how I thought I would like to plan essays if that was something I was still doing in my life. You can see here is the title of the essay, and this is a real essay that I wrote in my last year of university, uh, Gillian Rose's Rejection of Postmodernity and the Place of Aporia in Education. You can see that it's got a due date right here at the top, and then I've set myself some self-deadlines. So I want the reading to be done by this date, the outline and the first draft to be complete. And what I can do is I can actually add in those documents when they're done. So I would go here and I would click on the, the plus button and I can go to the bottom and I can add in uh, documents or anything really. I can add in web bookmarks or images uh, to each one of these pages. Then I want to create a table of the relevant lectures. So before I do that, let me just show you the scratch pad. Really simple. It's just a toggle that allows me to make any kind of notes that I want. If I was on the train on the way home from university and I think, right, okay, I've had this sudden idea about this. I'm going to talk about Rowan Williams' idea of paradox. I can just add that to my scratch pad and then I can link that into my outline and my first draft. Now, to create a table which just pulls the, through the relevant information from our lecture notes, we're going to type slash, and then we're going to type create linked database. This is one of the most powerful things that Notion does, so it's really important to get to know this. You're going to want to pull through from lecture notes, and at the moment it's pulling through everything. So if this was um, actually being used, this would have a huge database being pulled through here. So we need to use some filters to make this relevant to what we want. So we go to filter. We're going to make sure that, again, this is just pulling through from this course, 3018, but also only things that are tagged with SA1 tag. And that's going to reduce down the number of notes. And we can go into properties and we can get rid of some of these properties that we don't need. So we don't need to know what course it's on or the date. Uh, we don't need to know what essay it is because we know that it's filtered by that already. We do want to have easy access to the notes and readings. We don't necessarily need the tags and thinkers 
uh, and we probably don't need the week either. So it leaves us with this really simple and straightforward essay page. And so that is the university home notion setup I have. Hopefully you can see how that links in with the GoodNotes note taking. Um, you can see basically it's just two apps, but it's really useful. If you're interested in other ways to be productive around studying in university, I have two other videos that might interest you. Number one is about my system for reading, um, how I read using uh, Kindle and Readwise and Instapaper and how I make sure that my reading is really purposeful. And the second one is how I use Notion as a teacher planner now that I'm a primary school teacher. I really hope you've enjoyed today's video. Do keep in touch. Make sure to like and subscribe this video. This is a new venture for me and the feedback that I'm getting is absolutely fantastic. I really, really appreciate being part of this community on YouTube. And um, yeah, I hope you found it useful. Let me know if there's any other videos you'd like to see and I'll speak to you very soon. Bye-bye.